Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for coming back and watching. I appreciate it very much and hope you're doing great today. I uh, just want to say after my last video, I uh, got a lot of very kind comments. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It really does mean a lot to me. And uh, as I mentioned in that video, I'm continuing to be very transparent about things and talking about what I do. And one of the things I haven't gotten to, which I think is incredibly important, is that whole idea of composition. You know, what do you put in the frame? What do you not put in the frame? Um, and to me, that really leads me to the cropping tool in Luminar. So this video is about Luminar, and we're talking about the crop tool. So let me go ahead and get you some photos. Okay, so I've got five different photos, and what I want to do is really just walk through the crop tool. And you might be thinking, Jim, I don't give a crop about that. <laughs> Bad joke. Sorry, that's dumb. I can't help it. I have dumb jokes. Um, but it's very important because we're talking about composition, we're talking about, uh, we're going to talk about the rule of thirds, we're going to talk about the golden ratio, uh, and things like that. So let me just go ahead and get started. In Luminar, as long as you have a photo in there, which I assume you do if you're in Luminar, just click on the Tools menu at the top and then click on Crop. Once you do that, the Crop tool will launch. Okay, so once you're in the Crop tool, you have your photo here. and. Um, there's a number of things to talk about. So I'm just gonna go across the menu on the top here. Uh, the aspect ratio, that's a big deal. So most, um, so the 35 millimeter cameras, uh, they're based on the three to two aspect ratio, which is basically um, three, let's say units of measure across the top or the width. Um, so it could be the bottom, I guess, technically. Anyway, three across and two down. It's always width versus height. And so the aspect ratio is always listed width first, and then height. So uh, full frame cameras, 35 millimeter cameras, and crop sensor cameras have the th uh, three to two aspect ratio, which is what I have here because I shoot with a full frame Sony. Now, if you shoot with Olympus or Panasonic, there's a number of cameras that are built on the, uh, what, what are called micro four thirds um, uh, technology or you know whatever, but they have an aspect ratio that's four to three. So it's basically the width of four and the uh, the height of three, and so there's uh, there's differences, obviously, um, but you know it comes down to sort of what you like, uh, what your personal taste is, and to me it really comes down to the fact that um, you can just crop your photo later. So if you prefer the three to two, but you have a four to third aspect ratio camera, crop it. Um, I shot with Olympus for several years, and uh, admittedly, I kind of prefer the three to two aspect ratio. Uh, which is what I get with my uh, full frame Sony that I use now. But um, I have many of my photos I shot with my Olympus. I just crop them uh, because I just prefer the three to two better for me. Personal preference, there's no quality difference per se. It, it's just a personal preference. Anyway, so you have this awesome thing called aspect ratio. And you can see that, uh, by the way, it says free. And so when it says free, um, as you probably know, and this is really annoying looking, I'm sure, but you can just grab the little... Uh, you know, boxes of the edges and just crop it, right? So from the corners, you can crop it all around and from the top or the bottom, you can just crop it up or down, right? Um, and you can always hit reset when you're finished. Excuse me. Now notice um, there's a little lock here and the lock is unlocked when you're in free because you're moving it freely. It's not locking an aspect ratio. So if I go ahead and click the lock, you'll see that that changes to three to two, which is the aspect ratio my camera shoots in. So now when I make these changes, um, I, don't, I don't have free reign. Everything, um, every move that I make maintains that three to two aspect ratio. So as you see, I'm pulling this down. It's also compressing the sides. Now, um, maybe I like the three to two aspect ratio, and in my case, I do. Um, so maybe I want to leave that so I can lock it, keep it, and then you know crop accordingly. And the nice thing is after you've cropped, you can also move your photo around within the crop window. Now, you'll notice there are these bars. It's kind of a tic-tac-toe board. Uh, maybe that's an American expression, but it's basically these this overlay here that you're seeing, these lines. And this is um, called the rule of thirds. And so this is a rule of thirds grid. And so let me hit reset. Um, the grid basically uh, divides it into thirds, right? So you got three vertical sections and you got three horizontal sections. And really what this comes down to, it's a compositional tool to help you line things up in your photograph. 
Now, I haven't, I hit reset, right? So I'm back to normal. You can see that I shot this photo with the tower bridge, the right hand um, tower on the tower bridge lining up on that line. And so it's a compositional tool to help you line things up in your photo. And the point is, and, and this is taught and, and probably taught a whole lot better than I'm teaching it. Um, but this is taught like an art school and probably photography classes around the world that you use the rule of thirds to help you get a better composition. And I think that's true because if you line things up, especially where these lines intersect, like right there, those are uh, there's different names for them, but those lines of intersection, I refer to them as power points. And basically, you want key things in your composition to be at those points of intersection because they're power points your, uh, that your eye is generally naturally drawn to. And so that's what the rule of thirds grid does for you. I think it works, I like it, and in this photo, I think it works fine. Um, however, I could also change. Now, before I go any further on that, I wanna drop down in this menu, and you can see all kinds of aspect ratios. There's the original, which is three to two, and then if you hit transpose, that's just two to three. So it just basically flips it into a vertical uh, alignment instead of a horizontal one. And then again, you can move your photo within. It doesn't really quite fit. Um, the tower doesn't really align on any of those power points. So I don't know that I would use it here. And in fact, I wouldn't use it here, but that's what that's about. And then you have all these other ones, the 16 by 10. Now let me hit reset. And then I'm going to hit 16 by 10. Now you can see that that's a bit, um, uh, pretty close to three by two, but it's, it's slightly cropping. It's a little bit shorter. One of the aspect ratios I really like is the 16 by nine. It's a bit more cinematic. I think it works here. Uh, this guy is still in the photo, which truthfully, I don't really care about, but <laughs> he stood there forever. And I was like, dude, get out of my way. Uh, but he never did. So um, cropping to 16 by nine, it removes a bit of the sky. And you know, again, I'm moving the photo around here, but it also helps me get rid of some of that foreground because there's a lot of empty space, both above and below. And that's where you get into say uh, what some people call the three to two problem is that you end up with some empty space. Um, if you're, you know, in a landscape, you know, maybe you have empty things on the sides. And especially if you go vertically with the three to two, you have some empty space that you may have to deal with. And some people prefer the four to third aspect ratio for that. So here's four to third, uh, four thirds. Um, I can just move that around. Um, and there you go. I mean, I think that looks pretty nice as well. In fact, I could hit done. And now that's in a four to third aspect ratio. I think it looks pretty good. Um, it's a little too close to a square crop for my taste, which is why I prefer the three to two. But regardless, it is what it is. You can always hit crop and go back and hit reset and you're back to where you started. So you have all those, uh, you do have the one to one, which is the, uh, the square aspect ratio, kind of the Instagram look. Although, you know, it's been on film cameras and stuff in the past. And then once you get below, you have the inverse of the ones above. So three to two, there's two to three. Four to thirds, there's three to four. Um, right, five to four, that's an aspect ratio often used in medium format film and things like that. And then you have cool stuff like Facebook cover photos or Facebook feed, um, and you can enter custom ratios and it'll save them down here, which is what I did. I was just playing around and created a five to one aspect ratio, which absolutely does nothing for me in this photo. It's, it's horrible. Um, I was just messing around, so, um, but it saves that. But again, anytime you wanna maintain what you're in, you can do the free and hit lock, or you can just hit lock and it'll maintain your aspect ratio. Now, the other cool thing, we talked about the rule of thirds, which you can see here. There's this one, and now if you look, it's slightly different. Let me click one more time. There's the before, that's rule of thirds, and there's this one, which is the golden ratio. Now, um, I'm not a mathematician, and you're gonna say, who cares, what, what does math have to do with this? But it actually has a lot to do with it. Um, it's often called the a Fibonacci, a Fibonacci spiral based on a, a, I had to look up his name, is Leonardo Fibonacci. Um, but he founded this principle, and this is back like in the Renaissance. And so like the Mona Lisa, the Last Supper, uh, all kind of things are sort of built on this golden ratio or the Fibonacci spiral. If you're interested, go read about it. There's copious amounts of stuff you can read about this. And anyway, it's helpful. And again, aligning things uh, you know, in these areas is helpful to your composition. The only other thing to talk about here is you can flip your photo, which to me is actually really interesting and fun because you can confuse your friends. Um, 
You could flip it vertically, which would really confuse everybody. And of course you can rotate, right? So you already know all that. Um, I'm gonna hit reset and done. And I just wanna try a couple of other photos I've got here. I've got uh, back to the tools menu, go to crop. And in this one, I think the uh, sort of the cinematic look, the 16 by nine looks pretty good. Um, and let me tell you why compositionally. Whenever I have something that is on the move or could be moving, it could be an animal, it could be an automobile, I wanna give it space in the frame to move. Now, I honestly didn't do a great job of that here, but let me show you a different aspect ratio. If I uh, did this square, um, stuff fits, I can get that Vox sign, which is kind of cool. I can get Hotel, which is kind of cool. I'm sort of cutting off that a little bit, um, but guess what? I have a little bit of track on the left and I have nowhere for the train to go. I don't like that. That's why I like the original aspect ratio um, on this one. Uh, let me hit reset, that's better. Um, because I have, I like the curve of that track, I like the neon in the background, but I like that I have a little bit of track over here to the right to give it room to move because it's on the move, so you wanna give it space, right? So that's something that I think about compositionally. Here's another one. Um, this was obviously shot in Los Angeles. If I go into the crop tool, this is a perfect example of where the square format would work because if you look at this photo, there's a lot of road over here. There's a house with a bunch of messy tree stuff on the right-hand side. And truthfully, I don't really care about any of that. So I think I would probably do something like that where I'm getting that tower kind of on this line, that tree kind of on the line, the Hollywood sign sort of in the center and a square crop I think looks pretty good. You get the curve of the road, you sort of got your centered um, subject, which I actually think looks pretty good here. Let me show you two more examples, my friends. Uh, you, you may have seen this, I did a video about how I edited this a while back, it's an HDR, and I did a bunch of stuff in it, but um, you know, I would possibly come in here and crop, and this is where you know I would just come in and experiment. What I like, let me uh, go back to this, what I like is, I like that straight shot down the tiles, um, straight all the way to the end of the train station. I like the train there. I like the mind the gap of the line kind of going that way and converging on the horizon. But what I don't like is all this extra space on the right hand side. So I could, uh, you know, I could maintain, oops, um, I could go back to my original and come in here and just say, hey, you know, I'm gonna keep that in play. And I think that looks pretty good. And in fact, I would say it looks better because I have the grid overlay intersecting the train. I think that looks pretty good, but it's worth experimenting with other ones. Maybe a five to four. That actually looks kind of cool if you look at it. I've got, now it's not an ideal intersection of those lines, but the train is basically uh, on that that parallel, excuse me, you know, that, uh, that vertical axis. And I like the, mine the gap is still coming through and I've still got the straight shot down the train station. So. Again, things to think about. Don't hesitate to experiment. And last photo, this was a long exposure I took in London of obviously the Tower Bridge, getting the clouds to go by, and I don't know how long it was. Uh, you know, it doesn't tell me. I was thinking that it does. It doesn't tell you what your exposure time is. That would be cool, um, but I don't get it. So anyway, um, I think it was like a minute and a half or something, but the point is, um, I like the photo. Again, I lined up on this grid. You probably have this grid overlay in your camera. And if you don't, um, you know, just start to think about it. And if you do, sometimes maybe it's worth turning on. I actually use it all the time in my camera and I like it. Um, but um, here, aspect ratio, you know, if you try something square, I think kind of boring to me because there's too much dead space in the foreground. But you know the towers of the bridge line up nicely. But I think I would rather try something more like a cinematic crop here, because I think that looks really cool. I like how it um, sort of, you know, it creates a longer frame. You've, I've changed the aspect ratio. I got rid of a lot of the dead space, but you can still see the water. You can get a little bit of reflection, uh, but you can see that it's a long exposure. And then on top of that, I think everything's lined up nicely. So that's a cinematic crop which is basically a uh, longer and uh, that's basically the same crop that uh, or aspect ratio that I shoot these videos in and or record these videos in, which is the 16 by nine, kind of like the high def kind of look, if you will. Um, 
But that's really it. I just wanted to talk about the crop tool. I think it's super powerful. I think it's really important. And, uh, you know, composition is a big deal. And um, I'm not a master of this stuff. I screw up all the time. I make copious amounts of mistakes out taking photos. But I'm always trying to learn. And that's one of the things when I've talked about in the last videos. I want to do some different things. And while I am addressing Luminar and how to use the crop tool and get the most out of it, I'm also wanting to share some thoughts on the different aspect ratios. There's benefits and drawbacks to all of them. It just depends on what the photo looks like. But take some time, experiment with it, have fun, check it out, and let me know if you have any questions. If you find this helpful, hit that subscribe button, hit like, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I'll be back soon with more videos, and I hope you're doing well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, my friends, and adios.